We're back with Emily Brown, professor at the Pilon School of Business at Sheridan College in Mississauga. We're talking about the importance of numeracy for young entrepreneurs in business. Emily, let's also talk about some of the other skills mm -hmm. that a young entrepreneur would need. Numeracy, of course, being a biggie. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, what other uh, things on the list are absolutely necessary for a 21st century entrepreneurial mm -hmm. success story? Right. So as I mentioned before, many of my students intend to be entrepreneurs if they're not already. And in fact, at Sheridan College, we have something called the edge where entrepreneurs can go to get support in, in the things that they need to uh, grow or start their business. But uh, we're also looking at those 21st century skills. And we gathered information from professional organizations, from those who hire our graduates, uh, from the students themselves and other stakeholders. And the things that are really um, looked at uh, critically when hiring a student is, you know, critical thinking skills, problem solving, collaboration, cooperation, right? Being able to see the big picture, to be able to uh, organize your thoughts and, and to be able to manage a project successfully. So from my perspective in mathematics, you know, it's certainly math, but it's critical thinking skills. So you're, you're seeing something presented to you, you know, a language problem, how do you assess what your next steps are and how you need to solve that problem? And that's when this critical thinking comes in. And right. it's funny because I'll, I'll have a student, so I'm looking at producers and consumers surplus, for example. And I lead that with surplus. Surplus means extra, more, right? It's, it's got to be a positive number. And, um, you know, some students will come through with a negative number and I'll say, well, a surplus, does that make sense? Can you think this through? I mean, does that make sense to the situation? So um, those are definitely important skills that uh, are taught within my class, in the other classes, uh, courses in the program, and of, are of uh, utmost importance when we graduate our students. Yeah. I've always thought debt, deficit, mm -hmm. all those numbers mm -hmm. that we're subjected to via the media, uh, do uh, does it penetrate? Do we really understand what some of those numbers are? Billions, trillions, <laughs> uh, uh, um, you know, uh, hundreds of millions going to this, hundreds of millions going to that. Yeah. Uh, do we do we really give it enough thought? And how how does mm. numeracy? Uh, how do you get your students to think about those things? Mm. Those are daunting numbers, and certainly in class we work in the millions and billions and so on. And and one of the things that comes forward is rounding and rounding errors, right? Mm. And, and if I take it a step back with students and say, well, if you rounded in this direction, you're literally looking at leaving behind $100,000. And it sort of shocks them, right? So I, I want to make those, uh, those things we do in class really about what they're going to face when they're in business. So, for example, here uh, in Canada, we've doubled our debt in the last eight years or so. And what Canadians may not fully understand is while they see interest rates going up and they see their payments on their homes going up, that also applies to governments. Governments aren't exempt from that. And so when you have a growing debt and a deficit that's expected to continue to um, be in the 30 to $40 billion range going forward, uh, we have a huge issue with that as a government. Um, right now, it's uh, expected that our debt servicing costs, which simply means the interest to carry that debt forward, uh, may well equal those uh, federal health care transfers. That's, a very big number. It's a huge number. Yeah. And when you think about that number, that amount of money simply going to carry a debt through overspending, um, think about what that money could be doing, right? Uh, in health care, for example, in education. The opportunity comes. The opportunity. And the money's wasted. I think the same, too, of inflation. Uh, I find that uh, it's hard to get your head around inflation. Mm. You just feel inflation. But it's very hard to put your finger on the numbers and understand exactly how it's impacting. All you know at the end of the year is that you have way less. And to me, it sounds like inflation is a hidden tax, in effect. Yeah, it is really. Um, you know, when you look at inflation, literally every person in Canada is impacted heavily. Um, the inflation has uh, skyrocketed on those essential things we need, you know, food, um, eating out in a restaurant is virtually prohibitive because uh, rising costs, inflation also impact small business owners, restaurants and shops and so on. 
And um, also we see inflation hitting our fuel, right? To get to work, to earn the money, to pay for the things we need is, uh, is going up uh, at a great rate. Um, home heating and energy uh, also going up. Absolutely. And what people see is their paychecks aren't keeping pace right. with inflation. And so, you know, they often look at... Hold uh, that thought. Hold <laughs> that th and we'll come right back right after this break. Okay. Bye.